Logistico, how to set up and play. First thing you'll do is lay out the game board, and then for each of the 36 land areas that are separated with those brown lines, you're gonna place one random disc and one random cube. Just make sure that you don't have the same color cube and disc in the same region if you do redraw. The cubes represent goods in the game. There are nine different colors, so there's four of each, while the discs represent demand for that good. Next, you'll place the income indicator on the board and all players will get a marker starting on 40 Logie. I'm setting this up for a two player game. This represents money used to take actions during the game as well as end game victory points. Next, you'll shuffle the deck of area cards and give each player three, one for their boat, truck, and airplane. This will represent the starting location for each of these vehicles. So we can see for this player's boat, we find the matching land territory for this area, and then the boat will be placed in that C zone. So we'd go up here, and this player would get their boat in that C zone. For their truck, you find this land area, and you can see their truck would go right there. And then here for the airplane, you find this area, and then you just find the spot for their airplane. If you were playing with all five players, the maximum player count, you would not deal players a card for their starting airplane. You would just randomly assign each of the players to one of the five starting airports. Once players have placed out their boat, plane, and truck, you can remove those cards from the game. Next, deal each player another three area cards. These will be kept secret and they're used later in the game for bonus payouts. The final part of setup will be to randomly select a start player. The start player will never change throughout the game. Play will always proceed clockwise, starting with that first player. In each game round, all players will get the chance to take their boat action. So the starting player would take all their boating actions. Then the second player would take all their boat actions until all players have taken their boat actions. Then all players get to take their plane actions. And then finally, all players get to take their truck actions. The three things that cost actions in the game are loading goods cubes onto one of your vehicles, unloading goods cubes, and moving your vehicles. Transferring goods from one adjacent vehicle to another one is always free. It does not cost an action. The number of actions you take during that phase will determine how much money or logi you pay. So just taking one action, you would only have to pay one logi, but you can see the maximum amount of actions you can take is eight, and that would cost you 20 logi. You are allowed to go into debt during the game, but if you ever start a vehicle turn in debt, the maximum number of actions you can take that turn is three actions. You don't pay your cost until after you've completed all your actions for that vehicle type. So let's say yellow is the start player. They get to take their boat actions. To move your boat to an adjacent sea area costs one action. So that's one. It always costs one to load a good onto a vehicle. So that would be two actions. There's my third action, and to unload would be the fourth action. And since I've delivered a good to a region that had demand for that good, represented by this green disc, I now remove the cube and the disc from the game because I have made a delivery. So now that I've finished all my boat actions, I can calculate my revenue from the delivery as well as my costs. I know I took four actions. So here I have to pay six money or six logi, but I made one delivery. So you're gonna look at this column in the delivery table and see that for all deliveries during this round, it's gonna net me eight revenue. So eight minus six for my expenses. So I made a net two profit 
with that bow turn. So I move up two on the money track. This purple value in the middle column indicates how much revenue I would get if that delivery was made to one of my secret area cards. So if one of my cards had that area as one of the shaded areas, instead of taking this first number, I would actually get 10 revenue from making that delivery, and then that secret card is removed from the game since I satisfied it. The third column payout is only awarded if I was able to get my vehicle to that area, but the demand for that area had already been satisfied. So let's say another player had delivered a good, the good in the, the cube and the disc gets removed from the game, then I'm obviously no longer able to satisfy the original demand that that region wanted. So whenever I just get a vehicle there, I would get the value based on what's in this third column. And at the end of the round, this is going to keep shifting down. So the current payout's going to change in each round. This is the payout for the first round. A very important rule about making deliveries, and this goes for making deliveries with your boat, your plane, or your truck, is you are not, not allowed to make a delivery that turn if the entire turn for that vehicle would not be profitable. So let's say you had an expense of maybe 12 that turn because I moved my boat and I took a total of six actions to pay 12. And if the revenue from a delivery was only eight, I'm not allowed to make that delivery because the turn for that vehicle would not be profitable. I would have to instead just take actions, withhold from making any deliveries until my next turn. So those goods would just have to stay on my vehicles. Another rule about loading and unloading, you can load cubes onto your transport, but you're never allowed to exceed the maximum that the vehicle can hold. A boat can only hold four goods. The plane can only hold a maximum of three goods, while the truck can only hold a maximum of two goods. Also, you're never allowed to steal a good once it's loaded on another player's transport. And you are allowed to unload goods into an area even if it doesn't satisfy the demand disk. So you could unload a, a purple cube into this land area. It would stay there. Once it's off somebody's vehicle, it's eligible for any player to load it onto their transports. As you're moving your boat to adjacent sea regions, these bridges do not split the sea regions. So moving here would be just one sea region move. Also, you are required during the boat and truck phase to take at least one action with your vehicle. You do have the option to sell your vehicle, your boat or your truck, never your plane, but you can sell your boat or your truck as long as there are no goods loaded on it and you haven't taken any actions with it. So instead of taking any actions, you may decide I'm gonna permanently sell my boat during this phase, you collect three money instantly on the track, but then that boat would be out of the game and you could never use it again. All right, let's say yellow has taken all their boat actions. Now it goes clockwise to the next player, which is purple, to take all their boat actions. Let's say they decide to load that goods cube since they're in a sea region adjacent to that land area, so that would be one action. They move here for a second action. They load that for a third action. And then let's say they go four, five, six. We know it's always free to transport your goods. So you, he, this player can freely move these two cubes onto this truck for free. And we know this player is done with their boat actions and they have to pay the amount they took six actions, so they paid 12 to the bank and they would move down the money track. One final rule about ending your turn during the boat phase is you cannot end in the same spot that another player has their boat. You can move through their areas as long as you don't end your turn in the same spot. And that goes for the trucks also. The planes, on the other hand, when we talk about them, they can end their turn at the same airport as another player's plane. Once all players have completed their boat actions, now we go to the plane phase. We go back to the start player. Unlike the boat and the truck phase, with your plane, you are allowed to pass and take zero actions. You are not allowed to ever sell your airplane for Logie, whereas you could sell your boat or your truck. 
to move your plane. They can only move to another airport anywhere on the game board. So moving from one airport to another airport costs one action. And just like with the trucks and the boats, loading and unloading goods to the area costs one action each. Transporting or transferring goods from your vehicle to one of your other vehicles is always free. So let's say the yellow player simply decides to pass their plane actions, which is legal. We go to the purple player. They decide to load this one good. So that's one action. They're going to fly to this airport for a second action. And then for a third action, they're going to load this on the airplane. So they've taken three actions. So that player would pay four logi immediately on the money track. And as we've talked about, you can end your turn in the spot at an airport with multiple player planes there. Once all players have done their plane actions, and remember deliveries and everything work the same, you cannot make deliveries unless the vehicle's turn would be a profitable turn, we now go to the truck phase and go back to the starting player. Just like the boat, each player is required to take at least one action with their truck, or as long as it's empty and they haven't taken any action, they can sell it for three immediate logi that would go up on the track, but then that truck is removed from the game. Trucks move along these highways that connect the land regions. If they're moving to an adjacent land area that's connected by a highway, that only costs one action. If they're moving to an adjacent area but not using a highway, that would cost two actions. So let's say the yellow player with their truck action, they pick up that good, for one action we can see they want to move to this region it's connected by a highway so that would just cost one action for them to travel there and then they decide to load this good on their truck so one action two action three actions there's nothing that compels them to make that delivery right now they can wait as you see as game rounds go on deliveries get more lucrative so if they decide to end their truck actions there, they would just simply pay for their three actions. Now let's say it's the purple's player turn to take their truck actions. They'd like to get this yellow cube delivered to this land area because there's a demand for yellow. So they can travel along these bridges, but that counts as an adjacent space. So to get their truck to move there would count as one action first. Then it would be a second action to move to there. And then since this is still connected by highway, it would be a third action to move into there. And then finally, a fourth action to deliver this yellow good and remove this from the game. So we know they took a total of four actions, which cost six logi, but they got eight revenue for it, so they could go up two on the money track. And just like the boat, you're not allowed to end your turn in the same land area as another player's truck. Once all players have taken all their truck actions that will end the round, we'll do three things at the end of each round. Players will count the number of cubes they have on any of their three vehicles. For each cube, they have to pay three logi immediately and move their marker down the track. And then we'll move this income ind indicator down one step. If it ever gets down to here, it never goes below that. Those will be the maximum payouts for the remainder of the rounds that are played in the game. But at the end of each round, this will move down and the amount of payouts will increase. The third thing you do at the end of each game round is you check to see if the end game has been triggered. If there are less than seven discs on the board, that will trigger the last round of the game. As long as there's more than that, you just go and play another round. But if there are less than seven discs, then we're gonna play one final round and then end the game. So each player will get another complete set of boat actions, then all players will get plane actions, then all players will get a final set of truck actions, and then that will end the game. Most Logie wins. And that should be everything you need to set up and play Logistico.